Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the canteen. There is a lot to go over for this video and we're just going to jump right into it. So first off, what is the canteen? What does it do and why do we need it? The canteen is where you can go to eat and it is going to give you all sorts of buffs. Give you health boost, it's going to give you stamina boost, elemental resistances, as long as some other skills that we can combine ingredients to get and some daily skills from every meal. When we eat at the canteen, the effects are going to last until we are gone on a quest. And the effects will wear off when we withdraw, fail, or otherwise are not any longer on a quest. So whatever you are eating for, you will only have that applied to your next quest. So the first thing to note is that there is actually three levels of the canteen. At level one, we can have two ingredients per meal. At level two, we can have four, and at level three, we can have six ingredients. So there's four different types of ingredients. There's gonna be meats, fish, vegetables, and then drinks or alcohols. And the alcohols we're actually not gonna get to until we're in high rank. Now, meats are going to increase our attack, fish are going to increase our defense, and vegetables are going to increase our elemental resistance. Our alcohols are not going to increase anything, but the values for the attack, defense, and elemental resistance boosts are going to be two ingredients, small, four ingredients, medium, and six, large, and that is respective to the type of ingredient you're using. So six meat will do a large attack boost, but if you were to do two vegetables, two fish, and two meat, that would be a small boost in attack, defense, and elemental resistance. And for those values, small, medium, large is going to be five, 10, and 15, respectively. So for the meats, fish, and vegetables, there's going to be six columns of ingredients and five rows. And the row is actually going to be their category. So every ingredient has their own category. For the first three, this is excluding alcohols, we're going to have red is courage, blue is resilience, orange is vigor, purple is acumen, and yellow is artillery. Now, there are three skills per color, and you're going to be able to use every one of the skills based on the amount of ingredients you're using of that color. So again, meats, fish, and vegetables increase attack, defense, and element resistance. And then if you match colors, so for instance, for courage, two courage is going to give you polisher, four is going to give you writer, and six is going to give you slugger. Going down the rest of the list, Resilience is going to be Acrobat, Feet, and Moxie. And again, we're going in a two, four, six order. Vigor is going to be Rise High, Feline Black Belt, and Heroics. Acumen is going to be Groomer, Medic, and Specialist. And finally, Artillery is going to be Sharpshooter, Bombardier, and Pyro. Again, these are only for the fish, meats, and vegetables. Once we unlock the alcohols, they're actually gonna have their own four categories. The lighter forest green is going to be perception, the gold is fortune, crimson is going to be preparation, and then the lime color is going to be trailblazer. So let's go through those 12 really quick. Again, two, four, six. Perception is going to be iron carver, exchanger, and carver high. Fortune is going to be harvester, fat cat, and lucky cat. Preparation is going to be cleats, tailor, and safeguard. Safeguards are going to be a pretty important skill. And then Trailblazer is going to be Gardener, Scavenger, and Zoo Master. Zoo Master is also going to be a relatively important skill. So using any combination of meats and any combination of category, we can get a number of different buffs and skills. If we go ahead and look at our health and stamina boosts, it's going to be a little bit different. So some of our ingredients can be fresh. They will have some green glow around them, and that will mean they're going to give us plus 10 or 4 for our Palico of health for every fresh ingredient, maxing out at 5 for 50 and 20 health for Hunter and Palak, respectively. You'll notice down in the activation chance there are three stars, and every fresh ingredient is going to give you half a star. So every fresh ingredient is going to give you one-sixth of the full activation chance, and that is going to apply to your courage, resilience, vigor, acumen, artillery, Perception, Fortune, Preparation, Trailblazer skills, as well as the daily skills. So if we go ahead and look at our daily skills, we have Cliffhanger, Fur Coating, Booster, Backer, Provoker, Researcher, Defender Low, and Defender High, Temper, Escape Artist, Weakener, Insurance, which is one of the most helpful skills right alongside Safeguard, Deflector, Bulldozer, Trainer, Fisher, Cool Cat, Sprinter, Gripper, Weather Cat, Lander, Parting Gift, 
Dung master, foodie, biologist, microzoologist, and macrozoologist. Something to note about daily skills is that they are on quest rotation. That means if I go on a quest and I have three skills, those are not going to be the same three skills that appear in the next meal after I get back from my quest. Additionally, ingredient activated skills, those are your colored ones, are going to override daily skills from top to bottom. That means if I use six courage ingredients, it is going to take the first slot on my skills, pushing all the other skills down. Alternatively, if we go ahead and use two vigor, two act min, and two artillery, that is going to take all three skill slots and we're not going to have any daily skills that we can use. So when you are looking at the ingredients when you are going to make a custom meal, you'll notice that it is a 6x5 in the meat, fish, and the vegetables. You only have 8 ingredients to start off with, and then once you go into high rank, you're going to have 4 more to start with for the alcohols. The rest of the ingredients are unlocked through quests, services and deliveries, as well as gathering items. If you go on the wiki page, you will find all of these ingredients as well as how to get them, what the requirement is and some of them you'll notice are missing I will have the full list here but I will also leave it in the description if you want to just go read that instead some of these names are pulled from other languages so I'm going to do my best to pronounce them but these are going to be all of the ingredients we want to unlock and there's 114 of them so we are going to just go straight through it and talk about how to get all of them really quick so to start off the four meats that we start with are going to be wyvern thigh, skirt steak, liver, and barbecue short rib. The fish that we start off with is going to be jumble whelk, scallop chips, the veggies are going to be plumpkin, cudgel onion, and the four alcohol we start off with are going to be tater mud, dragon ale, hunter's brew, and star brandy. Now as far as I'm aware there's only two assigned quests that are going to give us the ingredient unlocks and the rest are going to be optional quests but the assigned quests being only two actually unlock a decent amount of ingredients on their own. So the two quests we're going to look at are flying sparks Toby Kadachi and the tickled pink Anjanath quest. Flying Sparks is going to unlock the following. Wyvern Head, Tough Meat, Thorny Meat, Ridge Mean Tuna, Squad Sardine, Samurai Tuna, Magnus Celery, and Wrapped Scallion. Tickled Pink is going to unlock Aptnoth Meat, Absurpast, Serpentine Salmon, Bent Backed Shrimp, Armored Crab, Osseo Octopus, Pink Caviar, Stone Cone, Steadfast Spud, Cut Coo Bean, and Molten Mango. Again, those are the only assigned quests, so let's move into the optional quests. Getting Yoked in the Waste is going to give you Wyvern Egg and Herbivore Egg. This is an HR4 quest. Boolean Meat is going to be unlocked by the two-star Exterminator of the Wastes. Chef Quest, a Rotten Request, is going to unlock Steeled Meat. This is an HR11 quest. The Meat of the Matter is going to be HR8, and that is going to unlock the Marinated Carpaccio. The Chef Quest Pump to the Liver, HR11, is going to give you Tangy Tripe. And the Chef Quest Gadralaka Lockdown, HR13, is going to give you Boorish Yellowtail. It's Crying Shamos is going to give you King Turkey at HR6. The Pains from Gains is a Gaiju Liver at HR2. What a Bunch of Abalone or Abalone at HR6 is going to give you Soulful Caviar. Fungal Flexin in the Ancient Forest is going to give you Soiled Shroom Cap at HR1. A Tingling Taste is HR11, Demon Tater Brew, Stuck in Their Way is also HR11, Wyvern Amber Ale, and a Source Site for Golden Fish Brew at HR13. Rumble in the Waste is going to give us Astera Beer at HR13. Now in Master Rank, MR4 Trapping the Tree Trasher is going to give you Great Horns Gulp and Auspicious Ale. Nighty Night Nightshade is going to give you Glacial Vodka and Toasting Tequila at MR5. Finally, Simmer and Slice is going to be MR11, and to do this you need to have completed Trapping the Tree Trasher, Nighty Night Nightshade, and it is also going to give you a delivery for Lively Spirit. The quest is going to unlock Searing Spirit. That is all the quests, so let's go ahead and look at the deliveries and services. Now, delivery requests and the services are two different things. Delivery requests are going to be in the resource center, and the services are going to be given to you on quest by the endemic life researcher or the piscine researcher. All of these will start with research help, and then it'll tell you what you need to capture. Capturing a woodland terex is going to be wyvern tail. Scavantula is going to be Giant Sirloin, Carrier Ant is Peon Turkey, 
Bomb Beetle, Magma Mutton, Pink Perexis, Courageous Eel, Sushi Fish is going to unlock Sushi Fish. Golden Fish is going to unlock Shogun Tuna. A Wiggler is Lily Gunpowder Fish is Ballerina Octopus. Platinum Fish is Sovereign Squid. And Phantom Bird, which is actually a Downy Keg, the little white birds, is going to give you Dragon Killer Sake. Capture the Ancient, which is a Petrocan, black and blue spotted fish, is going to give you Blessed Wine. For the delivery request, we are going to have a Great Help for Dice Stick, the Juicy Meat Resistance for Rich Rump, the Bone-In Roast Resistance for Great Mutton, Ancient But Fresh, Ancient Sea Bream, A Feast of Fish, Gaiju Gill, Princely Prawns, Coral Shrimp, A Thousand Year Old Crab, Millinery Crab, Tomatoes Red as Magma, Fatty Tomato, Mushrooms, Nature Smelly Bounty, King Truffle, A Veggie Master of Disguise, Aromatis Slurry, Phantasmagoric Paprika is going to unlock Prismatic Paprika, Million Zenny Veggie is Million Fold Cabbage, a Master's Toast for Master's Ale, a Fire Spewing Brew for Wrath of Whiskey, and Lively Spirits for Tequila de Locos. Again, that is going to be tied to the Simmer and Slice quest. So now let's go ahead and talk about the items that we need to gather to unlock ingredients. So, there's quite a few of them, and a lot of them are going to come from, maybe two or three are going to come from the same patch. But there's a few different nodes that we're going to have to gather at across the different locales. And some of them are going to be high rank and master rank only. And some of them are going to require an upsurge or a flourishing patch. Those will be able to be seen in the locale data on your map. So for the amber, we have dragon vein amber for wild chicken, ancient amber for giga steak, and the upsurge amber for twilight stone, which is wyvern filet. For barrel, the blue amber, we have true barrel for grand foie gras, abyssal barrel for kaiser turkey, and upsurge barrel for Noma Stone, the fiery sea bream. For the high rank, master rank only fossil, we have mystical fossil, large horned turban, and the upsurge is going to be wicked fossil, big bite burger. For the conch, we have choice abalone, and it's going to give us itself. The high rank, master rank is going to be precious abalone, and it's going to give us itself again, so precious abalone. And the upsurge conch is going to give us violet abalone, which again unlocks itself. For pearl oysters, we have a deep pearl for fortress crab. The high rank master rank is going to be innocent pearl for queen shrimp. And then the upsurge pearl oyster is going to be platinum pearl for hot heart. For cactus, we have jewel cactus. It unlocks jewel cactus. High rank master rank cactus is going to be kingly cactus, which again unlocks itself. And Flourishing Cactus is going to be Dragon Bloom, which again unlocks itself. For the remainder of these, assume it unlocks itself, unless I specify otherwise. For Mushroom Colonies, we have Exquisite Shroom Cap. High Rank Master Rank is going to be Spirit Shroom Cap. And then the Flourishing Mushroom is going to be Moonlit Mushroom. For Flower Beds, we have Shine Bloom. For High Rank Master Rank Flower, we have Gold Bloom. And then for Flourishing Flower, we have Sun Kissed Herb, which unlocks Sun Kissed Grass. We then have Crimson Fruit, which unlocks Tainted Fruit, the High Rank Master Rank unlocks Elysian Fruit, and the Upsurge Crimson Fruit unlocks Heavenberry. For Tough Skin Fruit, we have Rock Fruit, High Rank Master Rank is Wild Fruit, and Flourishing Fruit is going to be Divine Apple. For Butterbur Patches, we have Exquisite Butterbur, which unlocks Butter Brew, Millennium Butterbur, which unlocks Fortified Honey Wine, and the Flourishing Butterbur is Snow White, which unlocks Entrancing Albic. Finally, for Frozen Foliage, we have Moonlight Ice Bloom, which unlocks Snowmelt Snifter. The Snow Peak Ice Bloom, which unlocks Frost Peak Fizz. And the Flourishing Frozen Foliage, which is Petal Crist, unlocks Crystal Quaff. Those are the only things that we need to gather, and that does it for all of the ingredient unlocks. That was a lot of talking. I'm going to leave those lists linked down in my description as well as what is missing from the list because they are on the wiki. I did not make these lists. So I will link all the excess information in my description so that you guys can just go through that instead of watching the video if you want to. But it is nice to also know how to work the canteen. So again, 
Mix matching different ingredient types and their categories, which is their colors, will give you different skills. I will be putting all those skills and all of the details of those things on the screen over my background gameplay, so hopefully you guys are able to follow along. The last piece we need to talk about is the oven roast list. So when you go into the canteen, the bottom option is going to be the oven roast. You can put in raw meat, blue mushroom, mandragora, excite shroom, bait bug, wet fish fin, and wet fish fin plus, sushi fish scale, great sushi fish scale, gaiju skin and scale, wing drake hide, hide plus, barnos hide plus, jagros hide, hide plus, shemos hide, hide plus, gyros hide, hide plus, Pookie Pookie Tail, Bareth Tail, Anjaneth Tail, Great Gyros Tail, Odagarin Tail, Rathalos Tail, Azure Rathalos Tail, and Dodo Gamma Tail. These are all going to cost a few different points, anywhere from 60 to 200 going down the list. And they're going to give you a number of ration as well as either nutrients, catalyst, herbal medicine, or well done steak. Gunpowder is also a possibility. That about does it for the entire canteen guide. Again, I will be linking everything down in the description so you don't have to just watch to the end, and I will put that in a subtitle at the beginning of the video. But make sure to eat before you go on every quest. It is very important. It gives you a much needed health boost, and sometimes the attack and defense boosts are needed. One thing I did not mention is that stamina boost is going to be inherent in eat. The only things that you can control the boost of is going to be basically everything but stamina. Stamina is always going to be boosted. So hopefully that helped and I will see you guys in the next one.